We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you'll get actionable business advice. Hear stories from industry leaders. And share a laugh or two with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy. One conversation at a time. Four. Three. Two. One. Ignition. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer X. And today I'm here with Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Bivens, Director of Marketing for Pioneer RX. Today as guests, we have Craig McEwen, CEO of Red Cell Technologies, and Doug Hoey, President of NCPA. So today is going to be a recap of the Red Cell Pioneer merger, and uh, Doug's going to put us in the hot seat. So super congratulations. I know this is really you interviewing us, but uh, congratulations on being elected president of the World yes. Pharmacy World- for World Pharmacy Council. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Yep. Yeah. So um, So what does no, that mean? Really, what does it mean? What does that mean for uh, you? It means I'm the czar of the world. Czar um, of the world. Pharmacy. I know the czar of the world. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Grand Poobah. Um, <laughs> I am master of yeah. everything I foresee. <laughs> Overlord. Yeah. Um, sovereign, creator, all those things. Um, no, it's uh, World Pharmacy Council. It's eight countries. Um, it's not, not every country in the world is invited. It depends somewhat on their socioeconomic status and, and their, uh, even more important, their, um, the, the liberties they give their citizens. Okay. So for example, China, not invited. Wow. Um, hmm. very good, okay. but, uh, it's, it's all community pharmacy, uh, all community pharmacists from around the world. And it's, it's really built to get a seat on the, there's some international economic groups. The OECD is the Organization of um, Economic uh, uh, Development, uh, 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 Country Development, uh, OECD. And we wanted, and it really is driven by Australia. Um, they had the idea that to get a seat at that table, which OECD is kind of the uh, international chamber, so, so to speak, where all the different chambers from around the world okay. get together. Pharmacy didn't have a seat. And um, the World Pharmacy Council was created to get a seat at that table. So that's that's the long and short of it. I saw that and I was like, I'm not sure what it is, but I I feel well represented now. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> I feel represented in the world. I, right. I got a lot of feedback on it, and and I think probably most people had the exact same reaction, Jeff. Where I don't know what this is. Sounds good. Way to go, Doug. High yeah. five. <laughs> So I took the high five. Whatever high it is, you'll back. be good at it. So yeah, sure. So so in in five years, how do you know it's having an impact? Um, it it's one of those things where when you have do you have a seat at the table? So will it have um, an impact with how countries are thinking about pharmacy? Some of it you won't know um, because the countries are doing things on their own. So in the U.S., certainly we're advocating for a broader role for pharmacy. Mm-hmm. Australia, they're doing mm-hmm. the same. U.K., um, Ireland, etc. cetera. Um, but this, this should make those conversations easier on the, on the country level. So, you know, someone from Ireland, the prime minister of health, the minister of health from Ireland goes to this conference and he or she hears about the value of community pharmacy and what they're doing in in New Zealand. And mm-hmm. so when Dara from Ireland goes in to talk to the prime minister, prime minister says, oh yeah, okay. I, I heard some of this from my colleagues in New Zealand. Um, so do you, how do you quantify that? It's, it's, it's really hard to quantify, yeah, but right. you know, that conversation, that, that hypothetical could make the difference in, again, this hypothetical of Ireland, that prime minister saying, okay, it's not just Dara from the union, Irish Pharmacy Union in, in Ireland that's pushing this. This is a more of an international type of movement. Yeah. And I want to be like New Zealand. I don't want to be like New Zealand. Um, <laughs> I like what they did. I don't like what they did. I mean, it, it just helps to stimulate the conversation. So, so you really are the world pharmacies are. 
<laughs> Dictator, poo again, Pooba. <laughs> Pooba. Okay, so he Poo refers Pooba. Just so rarely used these days. So I, I thought that would differentiate me on my on the resume to add Pooba. Uh, um, I need to talk to you more often. <laughs> yeah. Well, Overlord. How about Overlord? Overlord will go with. Uh, as long as that's you and not us, we're okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So one no, of our goals for um yes. Getting back is we'd we'd kind of said, hey, we're gonna try to touch base, you know, keep us to task. Yep. Um, you know, follow up with us. With that plus we just enjoy talking to you and seeing what kind of cool stuff that you got going on. Guess right oh, now we're my, keeping our my fingers. Turn to ask, ask you what cool stuff you have going on in this podcast, right? Yep, that's right. Yep. Keeping our fingers crossed about NCPA. The fun teaser that I got on Facebook. Um my son came out to the warehouse on a Saturday and helped me build my big 20 by 20 booth. And I was like, NCPA, I'm ready. And Lois responded and goes, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. Lois is going to be at NCPA? Is this a teaser? <laughs> Special guest star. You know, you just never know who you're going to see at an NCPA That's annual meeting. Right. right. Or is this going to be one of the bad birthday teasers where she's, she's like, I'm totally going to be there. I'm totally going to be there. <laughs> No, no, she is. Uh, she will be there. Um, so when she, she and she really did retire this time. I mean, I haven't seen her. Uh, I, you know, I go through my files and I have three or four uh, thank you retirement speeches for Lois that I've given over the last seven years. Um, but no, she she really did retire. I th I've only seen her maybe once in the last couple months. She came in to to have lunch with uh, with Beverly and. Um, but she, we asked her to be, uh, to me, uh, like this ambassador because so many people, you know, know and love Lois. So, uh, I love that woman. She, she will be there. All right. So it was great catching All up, right. but it's your turn. Yeah. So you're, you're the host. Gorillas, hold us to task. What you want to know? Yeah, I've got a bunch. I mean, so have we, I've got have, a bunch. Have we started, are we on the record throughout we're, this we're whole, on the, Yeah, we, we've been minutes? on the record. The oh end. my gosh. <laughs> You thought you thought that Overlord stuff was off the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds that's... like I need to be reconsidering Poobah, maybe Czar instead. But uh, that will not be edited out. Uh, just don't don't let my world pharmacy colleagues see that. They'll they'll impeach me immediately. <laughs> I'll have to resign in dishonor like uh, other governors. Um, okay, so. Craig, Jeff, Marsha, thank uh, you know, thank you very much for inviting me back to your podcast. Um, enjoyed the last one, and apparently you guys did too, or you wouldn't have invited me back. So appreciate that. Um, and and just from the last one, a reminder that um, you know, and you guys brought it on the last podcast that I had some trepidation about doing it, not so much from talking to you guys. I like you guys, but that the merger had just been approved and our members in CPA, we've seen this movie before with mergers and you know great companies for independent pharmacies, but then a merger happens, acquisition happens, and the company changes drastically. Um, so I agreed to do that podcast and this one with kind of a, a all things go um, ground rules. And yep. you guys have been uh, uh, willing to accept that. So, um, no, I appreciate that because we don't, you know, the viewers don't want to see some, um, patty cake cream puff type of, uh, interview when they've got some questions about what's going on with the company. And, That's and fair. so, so let's jump in with that. So the acquisition has been, it, it's been, uh, it was approved nine months ago mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how would you guys think it's, uh, how would you say it's going in the first nine months? Well, uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll jump in first. I, I think great, to be honest. I think, it's, I think it's been going great. We've had a couple of key themes that we've been trying to uh, you know, set annual priorities for the company. And one is, is blocking and tackling for the QS1 business. You know, if, you, if you look at the two businesses within, within Red Sail, Pioneer and QS1, the strategies are extremely different. And we've tried to be as transparent as we possibly can about what, what we're going to do. So um, you know, you, you brought up uh, when these things happen, are, are things going to – great companies and are things going to change drastically? Our, our theme for Pioneer is don't have things change drastically. Pioneer is the most innovative company in the market, 
And uh, I'll, let, I'll let Jeff talk about what we've accomplished in the last nine months on innovation. It's been a lot. So we've tried really hard to not change a lot there. On the QS1 side, we've tried to change a lot. We, we don't want that company to be the same company it was when we bought QS1. We focused really, really hard at improving product quality, getting everybody on onto the same same two latest releases, yep. and improving service quality. And um, the, the data is showing that the hard work's paying off. The, the QS1 service and support metrics are 180 degrees better than when before Red Cell owned the company. You know, if you call, you don't wait <laughs> to talk to somebody. When you talk to somebody, they solve your problem. Uh, the the release quality is dramatically higher. And so we, we have been really trying to change that company. And we've been investing on the QS1 side. We'll be launching uh, next year the first cloud-based long-term care pharmacy platform in the market. And so we're investing uh, as well. But on the retail side, what we what we tell our QS1 customers is, we are happy for you to stay on NRX. It, it's, it's now a high quality solution. We'll continue to invest in it. It's mm -hmm. great support. But if you want innovation, before <laughs> Red Cell purchased Pioneer and after, the place you go is Pioneer. Yeah. And and so we we've, we've been spending a lot a lot of time on that. And the third area we can we can get into later uh, is around kind of how how do we invest to make sure that if you're part of the Red Cell network whether you're your pioneer or qs1 you're able to take advantage of some some of the um some of the scaling and technology that we think we can bring to the pharmacy market and we, we can get in it Th those are the three three areas and so far my my message is and my my assessment is that the market's been responding quite well there, there was a bit of period of time where we had to make sure we were going out doing things like this where folks were nervous about private equity uh it doesn't always mm -hmm. It doesn't always uh, end up well in these markets, and and like any any product, you can have Pioneer's a great solution. You can have multiple different types of private equity firms. The the one that we partner with invests in in technology to drive to drive growth, and that's what we've been trying to do. Yeah, good. I want to talk more about the private equity a little bit later, but Jeff, Marsha, what what have you seen as far as or how do how do you think the first nine months is going? Well, one of the big things that happened to us with COVID. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> dealing with the fact that I had pharmacists that I care about emailing me at one and two o'clock in the morning because that's when they were still working, uh, saying, hey, we got to have help and, and here's what I'm struggling with and can we work with this? And so we spent a lot of energy on making um, vaccinations easier to enter into the pharmacy system. Um, most of these patients were new patients to them, which was a huge opportunity. Um, and their opportunity to market themselves to these people, but you put in new patient allergies, you know, you put all this stuff in from scratch, you're talking, you know, five minutes or so times people were doing thousand vaccines a week it was just nuts. And just a lot of sleepless thinking, sleeplessness, thinking about what they were doing and trying to pass that sense of urgency down to the developers who are working on a solution. And, uh, you know, we rolled out some solutions to speed that up, some, some wizards for doing vaccines that put things together, some ways to import some things from some of the outside schedulers that people were doing. Um, we worked on a vaccination scheduler that we didn't get in, in time for that, but we is out in beta now. We will have time for the boosters, uh, a free vaccine schedule that we're actually going to make available to the, the whole pharmacy market. Um, spent a lot of time this year thinking about conversations I've had with you and about uh, how in the pandemic that people realized independent pharmacy was better than they thought, you know, and I'm talking about people, people outside of the world of community pharmacy and, but really kept coming back with how do I deal with them? You know, how do I work with them? But one of the things we found out with, with red sale and, and having 10,000 pharmacies, people started coming out of the word work and, and going, Hey, are you a way that we could work with independent pharmacy? We really want to, we just can't figure out how can you do something? And, and trying to think about what are the things that, you know, and it, it came up in our innovation board meeting where we talked about, you said the same thing, say, hey, this is how it's going. And so we're doing a lot of time thinking and working on that and, and thinking about how do we bring them together? You know, some things that we think about is a, is a common way to find them, you know, and we have a, uh, a pharmacy finder that it doesn't matter. You're, you're not bonused whether you're on Pioneer or not. It's community pharmacy based to search based on the features that you do for a community pharmacy. Our vaccine scheduler is integrated within that. So you can find somebody who's doing vaccinations. 
Well, more importantly, like, I mean, Jeff's touching on the pharmacy finder, but the pharmacy finder is really, it, it helps patients look for pharmacies and not Walgreens or CVS. It's show me a, an independent pharmacy around me. But while the patient doesn't know the difference between, you know, independent and community, like we've defined it, it's really trying to point them more towards like, you know, the the corner mom and pop shops that really care more about the patient than a CVS or Walgreens. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And we'll talk more, or I'll ask some questions more about how to make it easy to work with independence. Because, and Jeff, you alluded to it, is that is a big takeaway from the pandemic uh, that we've heard is, you know, first of all, who are independents? We only know CVS and Walgreens from our, our <coughs> friends across the river here in Alexandria at the in the White House and uh, in Congress and at the agencies. But then they understand, oh, independent pharmacies, we understand in a public health emergency how important they are. How do we find them? And so we'll, uh, we'll talk more. I've got some questions for you guys about that um, because it seems like technology would be a a key pillar to that um, to solving for that. Um, Craig, the last time on the podcast, uh, you said that you were really good at uh, you weren't bragging. You were just defining yourself. I was asking just for people to tell a little bit about maybe you were bragging. I don't know. But uh, no, you said you were, you were really He's good. Not a bragger. <laughs> Did you say you yeah. were the Pumba, Craig? Yeah. <laughs> I've learned quickly. Or the, that's not or the true, czar. But. Or the czar. Yeah. 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 So far, yeah. the things I've learned about Craig, he's not a bragger. <laughs> but he is good at healthcare strategy, he said. Okay. And um, that Jeff's strength was as an on- entrepreneur. And you were talking about, um, uh, you know, again, I was asking you to describe yourself because I don't know that, you know, yeah. a lot of the viewers had had a chance to meet you. Um, when you talked about yourself as a healthcare strategy guy and, and Jeff's strength as an entrepreneur, um, those, those sounded pretty, pretty complimentary to me, uh, but nine months into things, how are the dynamics between the two of you um, using those strengths or any other characteristics you wanna talk about? Well, I I think the right person to answer that first is Jeff. I'm I'm the the new one in the mix. I don't know, Jeff, how how is it working with me? I, I, I think it's great. (laughs) <laughs> I, think, I don't know that we I'm trying to think, you know, I, I saw uh, Warren Buffett on and some guy that he's worked with for 65 years were on some kind of talk show. I just caught a beef, a, a little bit of it and bragging about how uh, they've never fought in 65 years, you know, and, and how that was a big deal. And I'm, and I'm thinking, have y'all really done anything? <laughs> Surely you had to disagree. But I, I think they were making a distinction between disagreeing and, and, and fighting. So Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to add to and kind of help answer for both of these guys, Doug. So yeah, no, I was going to ask your thoughts I, Marcia, cause it, to get the real the real skinny. Uh, you know, there's times that I, I get to hear some of the conversations and, and Jeff will come back from a conversation with Craig, more energized. I, I'm going to say borderline bromance between you two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing it out there. Yeah, no, I think, I think, in, in honesty, I think our styles, what we've learned is our styles are extremely different. There, there's some commonalities. We're both extreme extroverts. So uh, yeah. sometimes it's hard for us both to be talking at the same, same time. Uh, but uh, we've got very different styles. Um, Jeff's energy level and innovation is unbridled. And so um, I've, I've learned there's certain ways I run a business. You know, I've, I've got this annual priority process and we've got a portfolio strategy process. And I keep that at a, a very high level. And we've tried very much to keep that a bit distant from Pioneer. Um, I've spent a lot of my time trying to learn, you know, how does the magic work at Pioneer? And, and a lot of it is, is just kind of rapid cycles of innovation. Uh, we've got a theme that we know we're trying to go after, and we're just going to keep experimenting with it until we get it right and, and, and out into the market. And I've had to learn how, how do I put an overarching strategy process in place that doesn't tamper tamper that down. And and I'll be honest, that's that's been a, a huge learning experience for me. It's one of the things I've enjoyed the most. You know, you, you get to be post-middle age. Um, and you've got styles that you think are the way to run a business. And, and this, this experience has been, wow, it's really hard to protect innovation while you're scaling a business. And, and 
I don't know. That's been that's probably been the most yeah. most fun, enjoyable learning experience I've had. And so I've, I've I've tried to spend more of my time on themes around how do you take advantage of the network to enhance the clinical innovation that Jeff's bringing to market. And and so I, I think it's been it's been working out pretty well. Yeah, I would say my my biggest observation is you take somebody like Craig, who has impressed me from the beginning, just in, in a lot of qualities that I, I don't have and probably never will, and, and and which makes that complimentary. But but you got a guy who's been super, super successful in his career, you know, come into a situation like this. He's the CEO. His attention to detail of visiting pharmacies, getting into our education materials and watching education videos, and, and really the attention to... I'm going to learn this freaking product, right? Like I'm going to get in here. He's I'm, even gone on some installs and actively participated with the installers. That kind of energy and that, that kind of tenacity. Dedication. And dedication. dedication. I don't know that I would. Ha- I don't know. You know, I was, I was listening to a podcast talking about how that risk makes you work harder, right? And and the lower your risk, the less you work harder. It's about innovation, right? And, and, and sometimes if you make things too safe, people don't innovate as well. Right. Because it, it pulls out some of their energy. Risk drives energy. Right. Uh, you think about dating or you think, of, you know, these times in your life when there's there's risk involved. And, and I see that, don't I see this energy and this tenacity and stuff, even though I would say there's there's not a lot of risk in 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 what, you know, in what we're doing today. You know, that really you got good companies, you got good strategy. Um, so. Yeah. Well, and, and and one of the big takeaways on that is the, is the bromance that uh, that Marsha brought up. Um, I'm going to be hearing this for a while. That'll be a lingering uh-huh. one. <laughs> Trademarked uh, it. Trademarked. <laughs> so so my, take- my, my takeaway themes from this so far, overlord and bromance. I yeah, know. okay. Headlines? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm glad. We're, we're doing right. well, folks. We're doing well. That, that'll be the <laughs> title that goes out. Learn about the bromance at Pioneer. <laughs> um, what happens at Pioneer stays at Pioneer. Um, Jeff, um, so just I'm, I'm going to try to tease out that question a little bit more. Um, and, and really, this is, I guess, it's mostly focused on you, Jeff. I mean, you've got people who know you, um, know you have a pretty intense personality, although it's been interesting. I'm going to take that as a compliment, Doug. Yeah, no, no this, is, this is a compliment, but but it can be polarizing at yeah, times. Uh, I mean, um, and I and I say that mostly as a compliment, too. I mean, uh, I talked about it on the last podcast where your your competitors uh, I think you said, um, "Hey, if I've uh, annoyed some of my compar- competitors, I'm I'm doing my job." And I said, "I think you're doing a great job." <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Um, but uh, so last podcast, and I think it's one of the biggest understatements I've ever heard you say is, uh, "You said in this deal, I'm just an employee," and then you went on to say, "The first text message I got was, well, Jeff, are you staying?'" And I was like, "Well, yeah. Where am I going?" staying this week just like I was staying three months ago. So nine months into it, where are you in this arrangement? Where are you in this deal? Yeah, living the dream like I was before and even better now because I I actually have, I think, resources I didn't have before. And not to throw any shade on where I was before, but um, there's just a lot of stuff I didn't know. I think I said before that when, when this first started coming up, I was like, hey, maybe I should go get my MBA. And, and then yeah. I was like, after after talking to a lot of people that Francisco Partners have put together, I'm like, hey, I'm getting an MBA. <laughs> I mean, I have the right. paper, but I'm I'm getting a much better uh, education and experience than I would any kind of academic approach. Absolutely, and Marcia, What are you? What about you? And what about the rest of the 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 Pioneer team? And I know, of course, we have the QS1 team and other folks that are part of Red Sale. But just, I guess, from a pioneer standpoint, what about you and what about the rest of the team? Kind of what's the um, what's what's the culture? What's the vibe um, in the building nine months into it? Buildings, I should probably say. Yeah, buildings. We're kind of spread out. Um, yeah. What's your vibe? I, it's it's been a love and feeling. <laughs> it's it's been interesting because I mean I'm I'm starting to work more also with the Red Cell marketing team um, and just. I mean, like the energy 
um, coming out of like, um, every time I get on the phone with Kirsten, I'm like, she's like my Craig in a way. It's like, oh, I can learn so much from her and Francis. Like, oh, I just, I love their energy and everything that I'm like, I can learn more from them. I, I want to pick their, their brains a little more. Um, but I mean, just we've grown as far as our, we've added to our development team more than what we had over a year ago. Um, and the things that we're doing with marketing um, and, and connect too. connect's going to definitely be a bigger monster than it ever has been. And I'm so excited to, you know, work with like Kirsten and, and Dylan and Sheila uh, to really take that to the next level. I can remember after, after getting married, uh, one of the questions somebody asked me is, how was it? Uh, how is it, you know, being married? And, and I was like, I can tell how marrying the wrong person could be really bad. And marrying the right person can be really amazing. And I married the right person. So, so you know, coming together with another company, another group, you can see how coming together with the wrong group could be really, really bad. Um, but coming together with the right group can be really, really amazing. And you know, I think you hear it from both of us. It's been amazing. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not trying to tease anything out here that's no, not you, there. You're, but, the, you're the average pioneer employee. Frankly, it's been a non-event. Yeah. And, and COVID has made that worse. Uh, you know, cause you got a lot of people in and out, um, but using the wedding analogy, and again, I'm not trying to dig up something that's not there, but is it, it could it be a honeymoon period? I mean, so oh, we're through the, we're through the honeymoon, it's past the honeymoon. Okay. <laughs> Art, leaving the seat up. Art is leaving the seat up, not putting the, the cap on the toothpaste back on. It's already happening. Well, we, okay. Let's just all transparency. We had a call with a group related to a cash card. Oh gosh. And I was, a, I performed poorly. Yes, I was. I allowed my emotions and how I feel about that to independent pharmacy to basically make the call a shit show. So, so when he's saying the honeymoon's over, he's like just not being nice anymore. But I, 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 I should have kept my mouth shut and listened, and I didn't. I, I let my emotions and and how I care about independent, independent pharmacy, pharmacy uh, make me not need to be better so so i think that's what he was giggling about about the honeymoon's over right jeff's but not maybe here's a tangible a tangible in his best uh, behavior answer. anymore when, when we were closing the transaction and I'll, I'll bring it back to uh kind of acquisitions and the like um jeff and, and the pioneer leadership team didn't know me were appropriately uh and nervous ner nervous you know just not the fear of the unknown for lack of a better word and and the management yes. team said hey our employees are going to be impacted. Can you promise that not one employee will be let go through the acquisition? And we did promise that. And there hasn't been like, a single yep. employee. Matter of fact, we've grown. Has been impacted on, on, the, on the Pioneer side. Not, not a single not, employee. Yeah. Um, you, not the case on the QS1 side. but On the QS1 side, it's not, it's not, it's not true. That's exactly yeah. right. Um, but on the Pioneer side, we said, look, the, the goal of Pioneer is to preserve the innovation enhance the culture and provide more resources to accelerate. And that's what we've done. And I think that's a good jumping off point to the next question. And, and Craig, this is, uh, I'm gonna direct it towards you because this is from an interview of, that you did with our friends at uh, Computer Talk a few months ago. Yeah. And you were asked about scaling up, this, uh, this is the question around scaling up payment models. And you said it's, it's, it's not only scale, uh, a lot of that can be done on a state-by-state -state basis. We can now leverage our density in states where we have a sizable population of the retail pharmacies and can go to specific payers in specific states and run programs that are unique to that state or that payer to drive different models. And you'll see us create a common clinical engine on the back, uh, on the back of it. So that's a, uh, that's a powerful uh, response. Yeah. Um, can you talk more about that? And, and then yeah. I also would, I want you to also uh, to mix in e-care plans about that, because I'm assuming that's a key part of the scale that you're talking about. Yeah. So I guess the first thing I need to quit, quit doing interviews. Uh, yeah. I always come back to hunt. No, I'm kidding. Um, so a, a couple of things. Um, Jeff and I were on a call recently in North Carolina and um, North Carolina, as I'm sure you're, you're probably aware, Doug, is, is trying to implement a, a health information exchange. And they were talking to us about how, how can we do that? 
um, and they're having challenges within the industry as is expected with these kind of things. And they talk to us for about 10 minutes. They're like, sure, sure. This is, this is pretty straightforward. Well, when do you need this? Is this, is this next week? No, 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 not until 2023. Oh, okay. Told us next week, it might be a concern, but next month, sure. And would you like eCare plan data to be part of that? <laughs> um, and they were surprised that that was our response. Well, that was our response because I do think part of our strategy, when you look at um, the data side of this, we're, we're piloting right now. One of the one of the great assets that QS1 had was their their claim switch, and so we we took that base logic, we're taking it in, in the cloud with with modern architecture, and we're piloting that right now uh, within Pioneer. There's 30 or 40 customers that are piloting uh, that for us. We think that's super important when you think about how do you integrate the data coming into a pharmacy, into the workflow, particularly e-care plans, and then extending that into, into patient engagement solutions. And so we are piloting and, and trying that. And, and the example of North Carolina is a great example of that. And once you start those exercises, and, and start enabling that, I think you can start doing some pretty pretty interesting things with the manufacturers and the payers. But I'll, I'd, I'd highlight that as an example. And that's very much part of what, what we've been really focused on right now on, on a development side is trying to build out that technology backbone to enable that. And, and a lot of that is enabling it within e-care plans. Yeah. Well. And, and experimenting with things we can do. One of the interesting um, experiments we've done that that today we can only do with Pioneer that we hope to expand a little bit was enabling very easily into workflow where a pharmacist can review uh, a manufacturer's um, patient education on the zero fill of a drug. And we, we've done several of these experiments. And what we're finding, uh, one of those is we, we paid a pharmacist $10 to review some enhanced patient education with the patient on a zero fill. And what's interesting about that was the, the pharmacist got 10 bucks, but what happened was we found about 55% of patients who didn't get this review refilled the second refill of this drug. Almost 100% who got this review, this patient education, refilled the drug on the second fill. So not only, this is, you know, how many pharmacies avoid just patient education in general with a, hey, do you want to, let's talk to the pharmacy? Okay, no, thinking that the doctor's going to do it. And what we're really experimenting with is what impact can that pharmacist have? And if you can imagine, this was a branded drug. So that $10 that pharmacist made was nothing compared to 12 months of revenue from that drug. What that, that $10 that pharmacist made is nothing compared to the health of that patient over those 12 months or the medical expenses that may be reduced for the health plan. So we're experiencing how we can do that in workflow. We're making it really easy that that document prints out with the regular patient education, that the point of sale pops up and tells the pharmacist to do it and that they can easily record and create an e-care plan for documentation once they've done it. Um, we, we've got a grant that we're working to try to find about 100 pharmacies to experiment with this further to try different types of drugs and, and, and these kind of things to, to really kind of shake things up and do things in a different way. And, and, and once we hone that in, we're going to do that at scale. And, and that type, that, that in my opinion is how you use the data and the technology and the workflow solutions to really go help an independent pharmacy. The manufacturers will respond to that kind of data and that, that kind of outcome. And what they've struggled with is being able to do that at scale within the independent community. Yeah, and, and, it, and if you look at normally industry, like if you run a program like that at CVS or something like that, you've got a completion rates of 10, 15% of people actually do it in the pharmacy. Through technology, we're able to get completion rates of that patient education in the 60 to 70%. And we're just blowing people's minds that yeah. we can have that type of completion rates of, of, of programs and, and doing that through technology. One of the things that I kind of throw this out because I want to kind of get your feel for it. Um, one of the things in my speech that I'm hoping I get to do for the general session is really a, you know, independent pharmacy's dead long live independent pharmacy, more of a, we're going to have to be less independent if we're going to succeed. And, and, and we've, 
kind of a go big or go home. And we've tried that with some different stuff. We've tried it with PSAOs. We've tried it with our wholesaler. And, and, and yes, we kind of gum together in these groups of three or 4,000, but there's no real mechanism to help us unify to do something. We believe technology is the only thing that can do that. The only thing that can bring independent pharmacies together in such a way, deliver these programs with high efficiency, 60, 70% completion rate that really get the attention in the world is amazing technology, better technology than CVS. These guys got old technology. They got people who don't care. And, and we think we can do that. I think Pioneer just hit it 5,000th active pharmacy uh, this week. Wow. Um, Congratulations. We got about 10,000 total, but we have to, you know, Craig asked me this week, hey, you, you like to do all these little innovation cycles, but what's your vision? And the vision is, is that through technology, we can al allow independent pharmacies to work together in, in such a way that they can compete. Um, Did you just give your speech? It sounds like you no, just gave. Just a little. <laughs> that, that, that sounded like a speech teaser. It did. It was a speech teaser. I feel like I should salute <laughs> <laughs> or bow down. Can I, I mean, just this is, I'm interviewing you guys, but you kind of threw that open for a comment from me, Jeff. And um, I mean, on the last podcast, I mentioned that one of the things I'd been saying for years is that there's too many pharmacy software systems. And that's not a slight to anyone. It was that because we're so fragmented, we need a, we independent pharmacy need a common denominator to be able to report, to be able to look at um, look at data, look at quality measures, and do the kind of programs you're talking about. I said in that podcast, and I still am a little concerned, be careful what you ask for, right. because we've seen massive consolidation in, in this area. But to your point, I agree that we have to, we independent, when I say we, I'm talking 20,000 independent pharmacy owners. We have to have a way to keep our autonomy, but yeah, we may have to sacrifice a little bit of independence, but still keep our autonomy for us to grow and become even more independent yep. So and even grow our businesses. So, oh, yeah. and I agree, mm -hmm. technology, I think there are other, you know, you mentioned PSAOs, wholesalers, buying groups, there's different ways that we, again, independent pharmacy can aggregate, but technology, that common platform for reporting is essential mm -hmm. uh, because without it, that, that's the only way you communicate in business these days is through Absolutely. technology. You so, know, people ask Jeff and I, Many times, you know, we're going to create the red cell PSAO or or something, and I think that's an utter, complete waste of time. Yeah, it's, it's an old. absolute waste of time. It's, it's been proven time and time again that that can't solve the real problem. But maybe you Jeff's can right. do Technology things like that. You know, PSAO's goal is to you know, negotiate better. Maybe you're negotiating better through technology where you don't need a PSO. Yeah. yeah don't get me wrong. I'm not saying PSAOs are waste time. Red sale Doing that, yeah. investing to do that mm -hmm. is it, that's, that's not where we can change the market for good. We, we can change the market for good by, by creating the ecosystem for pharmacies that really can compete, uh, yeah. that, that they haven't been able to afford. And that's where we should be spending our money. And that's where we are spending our money. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.